shenanigans together. Um, I would like to move to accept the agenda for December 4th, 2020, if you have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yes. yes. Okay. If everybody seconds, yes. I think they're in favor. Um, new business. I would like to move to approve NA1, approval of the limited service laboratory or laboratory. Um, if I may have a second. Second. Uh, uh, any discussion? Paul, do you want to give a quick anything or are we good? Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're pleased that we were able to gain the designation to conduct uh, the tests under a limited <laughs> service lab license. Uh, we were, I guess, smart in the fact that we also applied for the multi-site license. So actually all of our buildings are considered testing sites, which, you know, is helpful. And as I just was mentioning, uh, we are going to be, I'm going to pick up 40 tests today. And next week we're going to um, work with Dr. Ferguson and the nurses and hopefully Avena. Uh, who you're going to approve, if we can get a couple of their people here just to practice uh, what this might look like if we were designated, uh, if we have to move to a, a zone designation. One of the things that one of the things that we still need to discuss is uh, how we want to approach, and I, I, it's not something we need to discuss right now, but how we want to approach uh, those individuals within our school community that. Um, are not going to test. Um, there are some districts that are requiring all employees to test, uh, but not worrying about those families that um, are not interested in testing. There are some districts that are requiring all employees and requiring all students and um, moving those students that refuse to test to remote. Um, that would be very difficult for us as I mentioned in my notes, because of the uh, way our remote process is set up. Um, so we, we, will have to, we will have to make some decisions. Um, we have had these discussions, Patty and I have had these discussions with Susan McLaren in terms of legally what we can do. And so um, we'll make those decisions moving forward. I can tell you that for instance, North Tonawanda decided not to, they're testing right now. They're in a yellow zone and they've been testing since last week. Uh, they started testing on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Uh, they decided not to fight the fight and just are testing those people that are willing to test. Um, we, you know, Patty and I asked the unions about this. We are, they offered us questions. So we're creating an FAQ. Uh, and in that FAQ, you know, there are some people out there that are, you have some, you have the majority of the people who are like are pissed off that the other people don't want to test. Why should I have to be the tester and you don't have to test, but then you get to stay. And then there are the people who I'm not testing because you can't tell me what to do. So we've got that little bit of thing going on. So um, we'll have to make those decisions moving forward. I would keep you fully updated. If we decided to, much like we drug test everybody who's an employee, you can't become a, a, an employee here and lose the border without going through our drug test. Um, we, we legally can require all our employees to test. Um, there are some districts that are doing that and if their employees refuse, they send them for a 913. So a 913, you recall, that's where the district can determine um, medical issues that a person is having uh, if they're out. In most instances, it's psychological, but you could you could um, send someone for a 913 and record much like they would have to do a battery or psychological test. You could say you have to test, and if they refuse to test, then they're um, you can bring them up on the 3028 charges. So I, I put that out there. We don't necessarily want to go in that direction, but I'm just letting you know some of the nothing is ever easy. <laughs> yeah. Admit, uh, so Paul. Yeah. The um. When we do, if we do have to start testing, we have to test a certain percentage of our population on a how frequent basis. Well, they've changed it now, which is interesting, Betty, because it was uh, you were test first of all you were um, it started off you had to buy the test, you had to set it up, and you had to test weekly. 
and then in the yellow zone. And then it was 20% of your population weekly. And then it was 20% of your population bi-weekly every other week. Now it's yellow zone, 20% of your population uh, randomly over a month. So over a month, all you have to do is test 20% of your population. In the orange zone, go ahead. So this isn't something that we really have to worry about unless we run out of volunteers. Correct. That's cool. Yeah. Again, the only, uh, the, the small issue we face is, you know, you're right, Betty. Do we want to fight the fight? And is it, and make, and, and, and say to our employees, hey, listen, you know, we expect you to test, or do we just want to say, forget about it? And, you know, this is a, a short term issue and situation that we're dealing with, and let's just move forward, you know? Right. And testing now will keep us open right. in all the, all the colors, right? So a certain uh, percentage. Yellow. 20% orange, and then if we were to be designated red, 30%. And it's over a month, and it's random testing, and there's also an opportunity for pool testing, which is, is, is a unique uh, situation where you can actually, um, you don't know specifically who you're testing. It's a very unique UB is doing UB is doing pool testing, and I would recommend against it because what ends up happening yeah. is if you get a positive in your group, you, don't you know all have to quarantine initially until they tell you who's positive, and I don't think families would like that. Yeah, oh, that's that. yeah. We won't do that. Okay. But so with having the destiny decimation, are we able to also test anybody just randomly, like that comes in with symptoms or anything like that, or oh, just on these tests? No. Uh, actually, no. we could. We, we no. No, we cannot test anyone with symptoms. Not with these tests, not with these Right, tests. no. These tests don't work with symptoms. Okay. However, we could, if we really wanted to get aggressive, much like Niagara Falls, we could actually order, um, I mean, when you, once you're a limited service lab, you can get the testing, those kits that we had. You could do full blown testing. You can also apply to test for measles, mumps, and rubella. Yeah. I mean, you could, we could end up doing yeah. it all. We are just focusing on the Abbott Benex uh, that would be for asymptomatic people and it would only, we would only test if we were designated as well. So the other question I had then is, we talked about people who travel and then have and come back and whether they might have to quarantine. Now you can test out of the quarantine. Can we do those tests for our employees? No. No, huh. The different tests. So the test okay. that we're doing is a screening test. If you fail our test, you still have to go for another test. Yeah. So we could do all of that, Betty, but we would have to buy, we would have to get more more sophisticated with our Got equipment it. and and the things that we would need to use the test. Okay. <laughs> down the road right. question. Okay. This is a down the road question. If we're um, not requiring faculty to test understandably what happened what happens with the vaccine once it comes are they required to vaccinate we will not know that for a very long time so initially we recognize there's in the first rollout december january there's not going to be enough vaccines anyway right so the, whether or not we are required to vaccinate is not going to be a district decision. That's going to be a Department of Health decision, probably at a much higher level. Okay. Well, but it also it could end up being a district decision, much like testing. We could require it as part of their employment uh, relationship with us. But... Pre-employment, not once they are employed. I don't know, Patty. They seem to do everything to the districts, you know. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, is Charlotte, are you kind of considering if like how we handle this as kind of a precedent for how we would handle vaccination? Well, it, I mean, it, it's, it's our real first communication, not first communication, but it's our first attempt to look at COVID in, um, with us with the capability of a medical component. And so I guess you're setting a precedent with how you might handle the vaccine, but it might come through the state that you have. 
it could be interesting. come through. It'll be interesting to know, see how they, how they approach that, how have to. a public sector uh, organizations approach that versus private sector versus, you know, are people able to opt out of the test? But are, you know, I mean, vaccinations we know uh, are required. There was a, when the flu vaccination first came out, of course, it didn't end up, but there was discussion that the flu vaccination would be a required vaccination for schools as well. Or um, education zoom. That never, never came to pass, but. I you can know. go ahead. I'll, uh, I'll drive. Interesting, right? Anyway, even if we do end up going up to the casino tonight. All right, all in favor? Yes. 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 Okay, approval of the pediatric uh, home nurse services um, CBC Avena healthcare contract, NA2. If I may have a second. All right, any discussion? Pretty straightforward um, as to why we are doing this and who they are. You all received a copy of the contract. Um, did anyone have any questions? Any discussion? So Avena is going to help us if we get to a testing situation. Uh, they would provide LPNs to us, not RNs. So the LPNs, uh, at least four, one for each building, to work with our nurses, and um, we would also have administrators Brad Helgash and uh, Chris Hidalgo. Chris is our trainer, who is you know kind of. Uh, in limbo right now because there's really no season. So we, uh, we, we would rely on Chris to help us as well. Um, but the LPNs would do the swabbing and our nurses would do the reading. That's generally how we anticipate it going. Okay, anyone have any further questions? All right, all in favor? Yes. yes. So carried. All right. Uh, I would like to move to adjourn if there isn't any further discussion. Any before we do adjourn, I, I had mentioned in my notes. Is there anything out there that you are wanted to bring up or discuss? Um, anything that uh, has transpired uh, since the the issue that we have with the middle school? As you can see, we're trying to take a different approach. Uh, in terms of just isolating those individuals uh, that we are able to identify and uh, you know, try to keep the school open to the best of our ability. Uh, that has been the kind of new guidance, particularly K through eight, uh, to keep your school open uh, as best as possible. Were these new cases related in some way or are they all individual instances? It's random community spread Instant. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Oh, I have a question about, um, I know the note you mentioned in your notes, the notification is coming from the schools now, more so than the health department. Yes. Are you, are you going to put that maybe in a message to the community? Because I think there was some confusion. Um, yes, I, I, I planned on, on that today and talking a little bit okay. about testing and things like that. You might also want to mention that it was community spread because people are wondering if they could, kids got it at school and it doesn't look like they did. No, no, yeah. And it's actually, you know, it's, 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 it's what we've been doing all along. Um, even prior to the, the health department having a little better handle on the uh, notification, we were, Patty was still getting a lot of the information first before the, the health department. Uh, we were as all districts have been doing, uh, we were giving people a heads up. Listen, you are, we are asking you to, to remain at home because you are gonna be contacted by the health department and ultimately quarantined. Um, and that was largely due to the conversation that Patty was having with the health department and they were kind of giving us that guidance. What Dan Stapleton told the superintendents on Tuesday was look, um, it's, we're not, we're not even sure we're going to be able to get to people. It's, we've got so many. And so we are expecting you, um, obviously with phone calls to our people, but so that we kind of know what's going on, but we are expecting the schools to help us with the quarantining. Uh, the, the, you know, the isolation piece, 
is still, they're still being aggressive with the isolation. That's for a COVID positive person. But even in those instances, Patty often is getting that information and passing it on to the health department before the health department even sees it in eclairs. So uh, we are also, and most parents have been good about that. They're, if their child is positive, they're isolated. You know, they're not sending them to school, obviously. But uh, we are still oftentimes making those um, directions to family prior to the health department actually talking to them. So, but I, yeah, I'll certainly get that out to families just to let them know that it's become overwhelming for the health department. And in many instances, in consultation with the health department, we are advising families on, on isolation and quarantining before the health department is even able to get to them. Awesome. Anything else, Patty? That's not kind of where we're at, right? Um, that's it. Yeah. All right. Then uh, I would move to adjourn. Let me have a second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. All right. Everyone have a good day. Yes. And we will see you all again on next week, week from Monday. Yeah, week from okay. Monday. Bye. Bye. Bye.